to do some laundry. I'll do that tomorrow. Hold on, bear with me. I'm I'm recording a military jet. A gos hawak for a yeoman, a spera hawak for a priest, a musket for an hali water clock, a kestrel for a canava. Kestrel for a knave is appropriate here. Let me explain. Towards the bottom of this map is a place called Knavelands. This is a field name. Uh, I didn't know this until I read the report by John Blair and his and his colleagues on reappraising the Roman villa at Shaken Oak. There is a landmark on the second. Saxon Charter, well, sorry, Angle, Anglo-Saxon Charter of, of uh, Whitney, uh, S. Sawyer 1001. And it talks of, um, it's, it, it talks of a place where uh, the Knictas uh, Lichath, uh, where, the, where, the, where the knights lie. Uh, but um, the word knight comes in another 500 years later. So it's, it's the ancestor of the word knight. What it means is servant. And it's knicked is related to the word klapa. They are connected in, in a similar sense. That is young men's servants. Uh, and that's just what a knight is, a servant of the king. Um, uh, clappers, clappers are, are all sorts of um, classes, but they have a have a sense of the lads, which um, John Blair and his team um, describe really well in their report. Now we have the place where the connectors lie. Uh, you know, a thousand written a thousand years ago, and even today, the field, the field that that abuts that field that is adjacent to it is called uh, the Nave, Nave Field, Nave Land. And that's just highly appropriate. Um, very, very exciting. These sort of remnants don't often exist. You, you do get correlations with really boring place names um, from the Anglo-Saxon period with modern place names today. But to have a, have a link between... I've never seen a phrase like where the connectors lie in an Anglo-Saxon charter. Nothing like it at all. And it gets even more exciting when we go to the Roman villa where all of these, we don't necessarily know they are the same connectors or knapa. They are, um, but there are fighting men of a British persuasion that is primitive Welsh who Romana British in a, a sub Roman British who were buried uh, east to west within the boundaries of the enclosure of a of a of a Roman villa and not just that actually inside the building as well. So when you when you take these three three things together, the survival of Navelands, the Saxon charter identification of where the 
where the connectors lie, and I believe it's Margaret Gelling who worked this out, and this archaeological evidence, it makes a very spicy story indeed for us amateur antiquarians. The villa itself was, when these men were buried here, had already fallen down. So they were started to be buried here in 440. So between 410, the end of the Roman Empire in Britain, and 440, the buildings had fallen down, except for one room uh, to the north of the of the building. And there are no burials in there, but there are burials south of it in the in the rest of the in the rest of the villa, which it, there must have been some remnant of um, the, you know the foundations or the stump the stump of uh, walls for them to know um, they were burying inside a building. It is very interesting uh, the subjects. As I've shown perhaps you've seen in other videos of mine where I've shown how the people after the Romans buried their dead inside villas in uh, in some very interesting ways. These were not just numinous as uh, John Blair and his team describe in his report in the Iron Age and then numinous into the Roman period, I would argue that they're, they're sacred into the post-Roman period is period as well, the sub-Roman period. So I hope I've clarified some of the. Uh, I left it in a in a in a state of, uh, in a not very clarified state on on the last video. I hope I've been able to convey to you the excitement that I feel towards this this site. Um, now, as to the word as whether or not it is night at all, whether there is a remnant of a folk memory of night-like importance, you know, uh, uh, high-status warriors, um, that folk memory carries on into the English period, whether or not that happened, uh, John Blair and his team are sceptical of that. Uh, Margaret Gelling, the, the godmother of um, place name, um, for want of a better word, archaeology, uh, she thinks there is a, a folk memory. And do you know what? I think the evidence is good enough to say that these correlations are good enough to say that, yeah, there's something going on here. I'm back full circle. Back to the, uh, the Roman villa, which is just over there. I'm on the other side of the field now. So I've been up all the way up to Wilscott and then back down here. Wilscott, by the way, is uh, uh, Wiverley's Cotan, which, which is the, the Weevil's Cottage. But uh, Weevil uh, is an attested male name, uh, so it might not be the animal, the the insect Weevil. It might be somebody called uh, Weaver, and uh, when he was young, he was probably called Weaver, Weaver, Weaver L or something. I don't know. But anyway, I have pottery, and this is greyware, and it's just found it here in the field and it is you can see where it's been turned can you see that so there that is uh, a mark made when the uh, the pot was turned on a wheel it's all grey ware. Yeah, it's all it's all different pots as well. Though no, those two might be uh, from the same pot. But uh, yeah, pretty exciting. Uh, I love finding this was held by Romani British people at least fifteen hundred years ago. 
and uh, I'm touching what they they touched. So that's the end of my walk. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you on the next one. Shout out for now. The infernal godless algorithm thinks that you might like to watch this uh, video next. Um, but uh, nonetheless, thank you. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you on the next one. Ta-da for now. Come on, let's go.